Jay Germo is with me today from Hey Honey. I'm so excited to have you here because I know nothing about honey um, other than it's delicious. And I bet there's a lot of people out there who don't know much about it other than they run from bees um, yeah. and they like honey. So I'm sure you hear that a lot, but we're going to back up because sure. we want to really, people don't just necessarily get into honey. Um, but Jay, you started out sort of in the corporate world. You were living in Chicago, um, like a lot of people, 2008 came, sort of shook us all. Um, yeah. I think a lot of us feel like if you live through 2008, we just 2020 sort of felt like a 2008 in a, in a, little different way but i don't think it was as bad but yeah <laughs> i don't either i think i think that we sometimes forget we're resilient and mm -hmm. um and if we sometimes use the adage things can be worse but sometimes when you're going through it you can't imagine how things can be worse but 2008 was pretty bad um because it was that financial st struggle and and um so 2008 was not good. You, um, from my information, and like I told you, you'll you'll correct me. Um, you, so, good. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. You you headed out on a vacation uh, at some point. Yeah, I actually uh, I grew up um, between um, just north of uh, Traverse City, and then we moved down to. My dad got remarried and we moved down to um, uh, Brighton and um, my stepmother had family in the Bay City area. So very often they, they'd kind of park us there on the occasional weekend so they could have some husband and wife time. And everybody in that area with her side of the family was um, associated with uh, beekeeping and raising honey. So that's so, where so, it really started. So you ended up at your relatives mm -hmm. and i mean at this point were you sort of soul searching uh your next stage and you know what you were going to do or were you just hanging like tell give us give us the story from there because that's when it really your your life sort of took a shift um well prior to actually going up there i had i think i always wanted to have my own uh business but i didn't it was really hard to gain direction as far as something that uh, I wanted to do and I would uh, be proficient at and uh, make money at. Um, and after 2008, I was out of work for about, I don't know, eight, nine months. And then a friend from high school um, worked for the bank in New York and they picked me up. So I had to move uh, back to the Detroit area. And I really just had a, uh, I had, you know, like a week of leave time. And um, I guess it was a booyah base of um, kind of soul searching and just kind of hanging. And I went up uh, just to see a couple people who I hadn't seen in a long time since I'd moved away. And I stopped at my cousin's house uh, and we got to talking and I hadn't, I hadn't seen him in years and he had gotten remarried or excuse me, married for the first time. And um, um, he, had, he had been a beekeeper since I'd known him, but his new wife had, I think, kind of introduced him to farmer's markets. Hmm. And he had created a couple of uh, flavored honeys uh, that they were selling. And he said to me on an aside, he's like, you know, if somebody wanted to, they could probably take this down to the Detroit area and do okay with it. And I was like, Huh. And I thought about that for like three weeks and I didn't see myself becoming a beekeeper, but I apprenticed under him and, you know, not to his knowledge, I apprenticed with a couple other people um, just to understand the production aspect of it, uh, but then started uh, selling it down in Brighton and it, it took off pretty fast. 
Um, I, I don't want to like usurp your conversation. So I uh, no, I'll probably, I, I think it's fascinating at certain because point, when I feel like I've answered your question, I'll shut up. No, no, no. I love it because I, no, I think, I when think I feel like I've answered your no, question. No, I think I'll back it's off. fascinating because we don't we don't think about all the different professions in the world all the time. And when I saw your story, I, I reread it a couple times and I went, beekeeper, you know? I mean, and here you are in Michigan and I, and I get the privilege of being able to interview a lot of different people and you really are in our back door, and, you know? And, and I thought, well, this is really fascinating. So I wanna know a little bit more about your day-to-day -day life or you know what you do on a day-to-day because -day, i think it's mm -hmm. fascinating um and then we'll sort of talk about the products themselves but how does it work i hope others well, find this, this fascinating be, uh, but i i want to know how does it work i'll um i'll tell you this um i tend to give really long answers to really simple questions so i'm going to try and self-edit here so just kind of stick okay. with me <laughs> I've always kind of felt like, you know, as going through life, I felt like I kind of missed out on a lot of um, just kind of social opportunities that were happening. Like when I moved, I moved, I used to live in Los Angeles after college and then I moved to, um, I was downsized and then moved to Chicago. Um, and when I lived there, I worked for a small print broker and everybody in my social circle was working for dot coms and I was completely out of that loop. And I felt kind of like I was working in a, a backwards industry until the dot com boom ha or crash happened. And then everybody kind of normalized. So to get back to your question, um, getting involved with honey, I don't know if you've seen this, but I've been made aware that a lot of people in the corporate worlds are kind of downsizing themselves to side hustle jobs. They have secondary jobs that they do on their sure. own. They start businesses. Sure. Uh, I got into that, I think maybe five years before it was a thing without even knowing it. So um, anyway, to get back to answering your question, um, I started apprenticing with my cousin and then distributing uh, for him and then learning what I could about uh, managing hives. And a few years in, I, um, with another partner, I started up my own hives just to start building my own production. Um, for the first five years, we started off with like maybe two or three flavors. And then what happens is uh, I produce and bottle the inventory. I take it down to a farmer's market. I set up my little booth and uh, I open my mouth. And um, just just so you know, you get the real abridged version with me because I mean, I got a mouth on me and I like, I'll talk <laughs> to anybody and I'll just and just ridiculous things. And for whatever reason, in that environment, it works. Yeah, you know, people come over and that you know before it happened, they people want to talk and they want to engage. And um, um, the fun thing about my product is, um, as we started uh, adding more flavors, the way to sell it is to just have people try it. Sure. So I'd sample everything with them, and then I started developing slowly. I didn't know it at the time, but I was developing like a, a food pairing recipe book. So for example, we make a hazelnut honey that mm -hmm. pairs either with coffee, or if you mix it with cream cheese, you can make a stuffed French toast. Oh and my God. That would, yeah, that'd kind of get people going. So I'm like, you know, I should expand on that. Um, so I would act, I'd research recipes and build one, and then eventually had to build a website to go with it and then build a blog on top of that. Um, but to, to answer your question about the day to day, um, I've gotten to the point now where I've got uh, a few people working for me out in the field to actually raise my inventory. Like I, I'll go out there a couple, two, three, four times a month um, just to, to check um, stocks and how the brood looks. And then, you know, do we want to add more boxes or do we want to move to a different field or open up a different field? I'll make those kind of decisions. And then how do you decide what, um, because you've, you've gone from just a couple flavors to how many flavors now? 
Uh, Something like that's seven. Very, that's very really complicated because uh, I think we have 13 just straight single flavors. Then we have three primary um, long steep combinations, like a chili pepper, a peach and amaretto, a lemon and ginger. So anybody okay. who's who, anyone who's watching right now, you can go to um, the website, which is hey h e y honey dot biz. Yep. That? Okay. Dot hey honey dot biz and um, and check out all these products. And I want to make sure people after we're done talking yeah. head o- head over there because um, I, I think you know this is not your you know your everyday honey. Um, these are amazing, you know, flavors. Um, this is, I've only so like really kind of scratched the surface here because through doing this, I really kind of figured out I I am really unemployable. I am not really. <laughs> no, I, not I, really, I think I'm not really I think geared to you, work for other people. What you found is that you, you know, the best part of this is that you know you found you wanted to work for yourself and really you probably found your passion and you need to work for yourself because you get to as you just said you get to go out in the fields but you also get to do the business side of things and be an I, I, well, I like to say it like that because it makes people like what do you mean you're unemployed i love telling my father that he, he freaks out he's like what you're never gonna have a regular job like that this is way better than a regular job at that's least right for, for me is, you know what you created a life tell him that uh, that's from a publicist. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I guess I as this as this started to grow, um, I don't I don't think I coined this phrase, but I would just tell people that like the best jobs you could ever have are the ones you make up, the ones where you make the rules, you decide what you want to do as you go. So if you don't like a particular product, or if you don't like a venue or a way something's being distributed. And you, you can change that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as far as when we started off with like three or four flavors, um, I like telling this story just because it kind of shows you how things progress. On the first day when I set up the booth, uh, the first market I ever did, I was real. I kind of had my head in my hands just saying to myself, what are you doing? You're, you're a 38 year old man selling honey out of a booth. You have a degree in finance. You work for banks. What? And when 08 hit, it wiped me out like completely. So yeah. I was really kind of embarrassed with my situation. Little did I know that it was going to turn into something that was, you know, exactly what I wanted. Right. So one lady came up, she bought a jar and money changed hands. And I was, I was happy with that. And then second person came up, bought a couple of products. And I felt like I was getting a little traction by the third. I was, I was pretty invigorated. And then things changed on the fourth person. The fourth person, it was a lady and her husband. She must have been 60, 65. And she tried two of the flavors and she just had this reaction. She was like, this is incredible. I'm going to use this on... Um, because I think I had like a lemon honey. She's like, I'm going to use this on a poppy seed muffin I do for the for the church group. I want to bring the, um, the ladies group here next week. What else do you have? And I just started making things up that we have. I'm like, we have coconut, we have hazelnut, we have a chocolate, we have a, a amaretto with peach. She's like, I'll bring it by. We're going to clean you out. So I pack up the booth. I drive back up to the farm and I tell my cousin and his wife, you got to figure out hazelnut, and chocolate, and pineapple. <laughs> and at, upon saying this, they're like, this is, that's ridiculous. No one's ever going to want that. I'm like, they do want it. I'm going to show you. Yeah. And it started off with two of each flavor in one size and that grew to four in three sizes, then to 10 in each size. Um, and the products gave way to the website, the website gave way to a blog. Um, and then since you asked about flavors, a couple of the markets that I do, I have a lot of international, um, clientele Mm -hmm. and with the steeping 
I do. Some people don't, you know, that's not their, their fair. You know, they, they have uh, very distinct tastes and they want um, something from a very particular flower from their homeland. Mm -hmm. So I jumped on an airplane, I fly over to Italy and I meet another beekeeper who grows um, chestnut honey and heather honey and um, orange blossom. And we made a deal whereby I would underwrite a portion of his hives. So I'd pay for not the product, but actually for him to put up more hives of a particular type. And then the deal was he would get the lion's share of that output, but I get a portion of it just as mine. So I paid for the, yeah. for the hive, um, but he gets to keep brand integrity and he would bottle it for me. And sometimes he'll send me the regular stock and then I'll bottle it. Okay. But either way, it's we, we trade off on the name. So I did that in Italy, I did it in Norway, and then in Hawaii, and it worked out really good because I'm finding all these, I'm finding people all over the place who have a particular honey that they identify with either growing up or their childhood. And I or have- Their culture. It's, yeah, I mean, it becomes culture. very cultural. Well, Jay- It becomes I'm, a conduit just like to take people back in time to when they were you know, growing up or when they spent time with their grandparents or what have you. I love it. I'm I'm out of time today, and I know like I could keep going, um, but I want to make sure people go to the website, um, heyhoney.biz. Um, I had a great time going through the website and looking at all the different products. I was mesmerized. I wanted to fill my shopping cart, so I will well, go back. Stop. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. I I really did. I I you know you you go to the grocery store and you think oh honey and so like to me this was just fascinating um and when you were talking about some of the different flavors i was thinking like how fun it would be to drizzle some on chicken and you know like it really is it's a great way to cook and um I'm losing my voice today <clears throat> michigan michigan allergies people i'm sorry i ran out of the mouth i told you i tend to do that no i love it i love it i hope people really learned a lot because um I, I i did i found this really interesting here in our backyards of michigan so are you ever at the eastern market just for yeah, those i do oh. yeah, absolutely i do the uh sunday market uh from june through christmas so it just ended i'll be back in june Okay, so for those in this area, um, in our area, of, you know, where we are, look for Jay down at the Eastern Market. But as I like to say, you are global, obviously. So heyhoney.biz, go over there, please. I'm going to, you know, I put it on um, this site um, as I share this. It was so fun meeting you and learning about Thank this. You. You um, too. I appreciate I, the conversation. I, I really love this story. I mean, I really do think like, you know, going from this corporate world to really finding what you truly obviously love to do is is something that I love to when I find someone who loves to do that. I really so, appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will connect for sure. Okay. All right. Have a great day. You do the same. And an absolutely amazing 2021. <laughs> <laughs> same deal. Take care. Take care. Okay.